Hey, it's Ethan. Today I'm doing another one of these Dollar General makeover projects, similar to the Mandalorian one. So first I'm going to start with some white paint, and I've got my MDF decoration. Really, you could get it from anywhere, but I just happen to get this one from Dollar General. And step one is I'm going to cover it in white paint. Or you could spray it down with primer or paint it with primer, whatever you want to do. Uh, the key is, is that you really want the center of the image to be blocked out uh, for the rest of the project. I got my chip brush. I'm just going to brush on this paint and blurf it on heavy since I'm not priming this. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece, just cover it up with white paint. Still blurfing on the paint. And then the other thing is if you don't have a decoration like this, that's all right. You can use a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood, whatever you got that's going to work for your uses. And then what I tend to do is I put a piece of paper over the paint just to be clever that way. It may or may not be the best idea, but it's what I'm going with. And then I'm putting another layer of paint over it to really seal it in there. Uh, since I didn't prime, really you'd think I would just prime and get it over with, but I didn't. This step is completely optional. It's up to you if you want to do this. All right, now that my paint is dry and the center of the image isn't going to bleed through, here is what I'm going to work with this time. So what I did in this case is I used my inkjet printer and printed off this 5x7 picture. Um, I'm concerned about using water with inkjet because I really think, even though that's had about a day or so to dry, um, that it's just going to wash out. So I have a test picture and I'm using Stormtroopers as my test because they're expendable. I mean, the Empire has that opinion. That's, that's them saying that, not me. So, <laughs> um, as you can see, the ink is kind of running off. So it's a bit iffy about using this sort of thing, so I just have my extra bowl to ditch that in. Uh, however, because YOLO, I think I am going to go ahead and use my picture anyway, uh, because I actually want this to be really washed out and faded on purpose. And I'll get into that a little later in the video about the why of it and what I'm up to. But anyway, here's my blank canvas. I don't know what the buildup is right now. This is the joy of doing voiceover after I've recorded this about a week ago. Here we go, putting down some Mod Podge at long last. I prefer to use matte Mod Podge just because I'm weird that way. Brushing it on. And then it's not like it dries instantly as you put it on there, so you have a little time to work with this. Uh, however, I try to do everything all at once just because I want the Mod Podge as fresh as possible when I go to put the wet image down. So I did not use as big a brush as I should have for this, but that's all right. The joy of creativity, just kind of use what you got. So once the Mod Podge is figured out, here's my image, it's going in the water. I want to make sure that it gets fully soaked through. Sorry about this. This is hard to do, trying to adjust the camera and work with the image at the same time. 
and it did not disintegrate in the way that I thought it would. Which is kind of disappointing because I really wanted it to dis disintegrate more. But that's okay, we work with what we got. So what I'm doing now is trying to make sure that there's no bubbles onto the picture. Uh, which is a bit hard to do when it's all wet and shiny like this. Uh, so what I'm doing now is just taking a tissue and I'm going to dab at it. I think what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up my mess of the splash around first. For reasons. Alright, so here's my test stormtroopers. And you see they really took a shellacking. Um, so interestingly, my chosen image held up better. Uh, so why Nova here didn't uh, go to hell, I don't get it. But that's fine. Uh, it's not like I want the picture to be completely annihilated. But I do want some degree of distressing, so I'm a bit disappointed that it didn't quite turn out that way with this. But that's all right. So now what I'm doing is just going over it and making sure for sure now that there are no bubbles because uh, they have a tendency to kind of hide. Next, I'm going to use some watercolor pencils. And what I wanted to do was shade in some areas and then put some water over that. Now this has been this is dried. This isn't like it's just like immediately right out of the water like this. So it's about a day later. Um, I went through and colored in some stuff. Nova has blue hair. Because that's how they roll with Japanese anime characters. Um, I didn't want to fully color everything. I just wanted some. Um... And so, and I really hadn't used watercolor pencils in a really long time. And these are just dollar store pencils. Um, so I Googled it about what to do with these. And supposedly you just kind of put them down like colored pencil. But then when you add water, they're going to kind of dissolve and then spread. Well, here we go. Here's the, the testing. So I've got my clean brush, I got a cup of water, and I'm just going over my spots here with the water to see if it really does dissolve down and give that watercolor appearance and not the hard colored pencil look that I don't want. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of cleaning off the brush and reapplying water as I go. And when you're doing it, it seems like it might be working, but I think it's because these are dollar store watercolor pencils. These are not panning out, or it could be the way that, like, the kind of medium I'm working in. That's also entirely possible. I don't want to completely throw these pencils under the bus here, but I was not mega pleased with the result. Uh, but that's all right. I mean, this is just a silly art project, so it's not being entered into a contest or anything. Um, and my feeling is, is that this is the kind of thing I always just do over again and see if I get a different result or use different uh, materials. Maybe I would run this through the copier instead of the inkjet. Maybe I should run it through the inkjet, but like run it through the water more so that it really does disintegrate better down so that it's more distressed and choppy. So, all things considered, it was uh, 
Linked Successful Art Project. It didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to, however, um, such is creativity. Um, the ideal thing for this kind of project would have been to have this like in copy paper or, or you know, made on a color copier if that was what my intent was or at least a black and white copy. This is inkjet on just copy paper and that's well and good for the kind of effect I was going for. The only problem is is that the ink has a tendency to bleed off. What I like about this, even though it didn't quite go the way I wanted it to, um, is that the show that this is from is way old. It's from the 80s. Um, these days we have things like Netflix, but back in the day, the binging meant watching a bunch of stuff <laughs> uh, any way you could do it, but there was no on-demand. Um, and so back in the day, I had the box set of all the VHS of a show that we know as Robotech, but apparently it was really kind of bastardized from other Japanese anime. Uh, so the original series was called Macross, and then I completely forgot that she is from another show called Southern Cross, which got kind of mashed into the Robotech series, whether it belonged there or not. Um, to the point where character names and everything were changed. And I, as I recall, I think even like the plot itself had been messed with. <laughs> now, we as Americans wouldn't really know that. Um, apparently purists were mega offended that they did what they did. But again, it was a different time. And in that different time, you kind of got what you could get, really. <laughs> uh, again, we're so used to things being on demand and you hear that something was like, say, big in Armenia and somehow you can get your mitts on it. And back then, it's like you'd have to know somebody from Armenia <laughs> who happened to be carrying a copy of whatever it was that uh, that was the hot thing, I guess. <laughs> um, usually back in the day, music was the thing. So there was import albums. Either you could order them like mail order <laughs> or somebody would take a trip to like say England and then they would come back with all this neat stuff that we had no idea existed. Um, earlier tonight, Jamie and I were watching a new favorite British TV show called Life of Modern Life is Goodish. And he made a throwaway joke about again the eighties, where he said that over there that the kids were hopped up on having seen American television. And conversely with my upbringing and my past is we were hopped up on imports. So not so much British TV to, to me at that time, it would have been Monty Python. Uh, I like Dave Allen at large. I don't know. I think that's more Irish than anything, but Again, I think it was a UK or you know an England show, but Dave Dave Allen was Irish. Um, but there was just very little content of that kind available here then. Um, so what I like about this is the dreamy fadedness of this is all going away. Now it's kind of back. In fact, it's on crackle. <laughs> Uh, if you really want to watch it, so bad. But I don't know that I recommend it. What I didn't realize is, on a subconscious level, I think, watching, because I was waiting for the episode for her to show up at some point so I can get some footage. Um, it influenced the novel Deadshot that I wrote. Um, it's not in any way one and the same. It's not in any way like a rip-off of it. Um, but as far as like the characters I came up with, specifically there's Sapphire Sorellis and then there's uh, Diane Pembroke, the, the lead character. And their interactions in the book are kind of in the style of 
Nova and Dana Sterling. Um, to the point where Nova is military police and Dana Sterling is a lieutenant in the military. And as far as we know, in the way that it's presented to us, as maybe the Japanese version was utterly different. Um, I don't think they can tinker with the fact that, other than changing her name, that Nova was military police, but beyond that, I don't know where the, where the story diverges. Anyway, um, I think, again, there's also just the archetype of, in the case of Dana Sterling or Diane Pembroke, that you've got the upstart female character who's trying to prove herself. Um, in the case of Diane, it's different, and I don't really want to go into deep detail about it other than to say read the book. Um, she's not an upstart, like she's trying to be a, a cop outright. That's not her intent, but that's kind of what she falls into. Um, I do get grief from time to time from people who read the books and leave comments on Amazon or Goodreads where they complain about how unrealistic my fiction is. <laughs> but, you know, the reality on the ground here is that there are people who have jobs that they just shouldn't have. Let's be real. And yet they've got it. And whether they ought to have it or whether or not they're the least bit competent, competent at it, the fact is they've got the name on the, on the, on the org chart saying that that's what they do. Um, and until somebody takes it away from them, they're going to keep doing it. Um, I've had experiences in my own past where I got jobs just by virtue of the fact of literally one time I made a joke and I got hired. Now, luckily, I had some kind of experience in the job that I was being hired to do. Uh, but at the time, in that moment, it was completely beside the point. Um, and this happens. This happens all the time. Whether or not we choose to admit it, maybe I'm speaking from the world of white privilege, and perhaps I am. Uh, but there are people who have jobs that shouldn't have them that do, and the rest of us have to kind of put up with it. <laughs> uh, so is the case with Diane Pembroke. Um, anyway, so this is a fun little art project. My little studio space is coming along. It's, uh, uh, it's really funny. Di uh, Jamie's side of the room is all nail polish and glam and my side is wood and tools and paint and wood filler <laughs> so over the coming weeks it'll come more together and look like something as this wood gets used for what its intended purpose is and more stuff gets done around the house or the apartment anyway thanks for watching and see you at home fabulous yeah